Penis Boy is the new thing that's going to go into Greg's account. Little picture of a willy there. I think it's quite cute. Penis Boy. Penis Boy. That's like a homage to my Navy days. That kind of riled him up quite a lot. Bio. Your mum likes it. And uh, location. Greg's mum. Okay, welcome back then. I'm in the Shadowlands HQ. I've just finished teaching and I really want to just discuss something on here. And it's more to do with the Royal Air Force than the other services. It comes back to my theory that there are significant issues with the leadership of Her Majesty's Royal Air Force. There has been, I would say, for the last half decade, and the last Chief of Air Staff is probably uh, leading in that charge. He's just left, I think, a couple of days ago. We've got a new guy in who was his deputy. That is also a worry. And we're going to have a look at that now. So what we're going to do quickly is just jump to that section on the Royal Air Force, and then I'm going to talk to you about a very public falling out I've had with a former commander in the Royal Air Force. And I think you will begin to understand what I'm talking about. So I've just leaped over this side of the screen then because the information I want is on the other side. It's on that that side. It's on that side, people. <laughs> All right, I'm a bit confused. Listen, attitude towards RAF senior leaders has fallen for the second year in a row to their lowest levels ever. That's the thing I'm talking about now. And if we look at it, percentage agree that RAF senior leaders are keen to listen to service personnel's feedback, one in four. To communicate decisions, one in four. One in four, believe this. But this is the worst one now. It's about one in seven. Understand the impact of change of personnel. What people are saying is they have no idea what this change is doing to the personnel under their command. This is pretty disgusting for me, and I've said this before, guys. I've said the fact that if you are some kind of leader within the Royal Air Force, whether you're in the senior officer, senior NCOs, sorry, non-commissioned, or you're in the commission, ranks if you're not doing something about this you are part of this problem and that will be your legacy and it is the chief of air staff legacy mike wigston i've said this before and that's why i keep pushing this okay because i don't believe my big thing is with quotas with the armed force with the chief of air staff and his quotas we'll have a look at that in a second but look confidence in the leadership of the raf has halved in the last two years to its lowest level since the question was first asked in 2015 confidence in the leadership of the raf has halved in the last two years to its lowest level. That's incredible to me. Lowest level ever, 18% RF personnel are now less likely to agree that they have confidence in the leadership compared with other services. Look at the Royal Marines up here. Royal Marines are most likely to agree they have confidence in the leadership of the service. My father was a Royal Marine. This is why I go against the Royal Air Force. I couldn't be in the Royal Air Force today. It's outrageous. Look, half Royal Marines have confidence in the leadership. The rest are manking. We know that. That's what Royal does. Fair enough. We all understand that. Let's look at some more, shall we? Now, this is one of the leaders that I was talking about. And I fell out with this dude the other night. He fell out with me, in fact. A guy called Greg Bagwell. He used to be uh, what's called DCOM Ops, Deputy Commander Operations of the Royal Air Force, so the 2IC. I believe he was a two star. He's got a Twitter account. He likes to throw stuff out on Twitter and and uh, to be fair, I'm not a massive fan of the man. However, I'm happy to have some very tolerant debate, always have been, although he just basically called me names and uh, then blocked me. So we're going to have a look at it because it is handbag at dawn and it is completely beneath me to brief on this. And this, I think, says it all. Uh, the fact was he was commenting on the fake news he felt that Sky News had put it out. I was actually on uh, Talk TV yesterday talking a little bit about this. Basically, there's been a campaign against recruiting white men for some reason in the Royal Air Force primarily because the Chief of Air Staff has a very public quota uh, system in place for 40% women and 20% ethnic minorities by 2030 and that was the previous Chief of Air Staff but there's no indication that the current Chief who's just took over about two days ago is ever going to change that. So he's basically saying here that this is fake news, it's travelling far and wide and the flippancy of this uh, well, I've helped out so many of these young people try and get in. I deal with this every single day, these young people not being able to get in. For me, it was a bit too much. And as you can see there, however, it is true. They set rather hard standards for entry. Uh, still hiring white pilots. Any useless any useless white pi male pilot should first contact the Russian Air Force who aren't so picky. I wrote the flippancy over this. A former senior air rank tells you everything you need to know about the RAF's current recruitment standards. Fly Navy, because I was a naval officer. I was a naval officer first, and I was an Air Force officer second. So I did five years in Navy, 15 years in the Royal Air Force. He says everything makes sense and then he insults me and about 20 seconds after this, I've managed to see it, it, it obviously blocked me. Deputy Commander of the Royal Air Force. This is, this is, and also now he works for, I'm not, and I don't want to cancel no one, I'm not into that. I don't, I'm not going to tell you who he works for, nothing, I'm not into that, okay? I don't, I'm not even, I'm not going down that line, fine. All I'm saying is, let's have a look at the leadership of the Royal Air Force, have a look at what that is. Now, the thing about the leadership of the Royal Air Force, I will say this one thing. If the leadership of the Royal Air Force, if it's able to do this publicly, if it's able to say this publicly, then I want you to have a think about what it's able to do behind closed doors. That's the issue. And you wonder why people say 
that no one has trust in the leadership of the Royal Air Force. Now, this has been running for several months now. I think Sky News and Deborah Haynes have been getting behind all this stuff. Obviously, we know there's an issue with the Royal Air Force when it comes to the employment of white people. They've got these policies in place where they are really trying to drive home some uh, minorities and some women into the service. A lot, in fact, as I said, 40% women and 20% minorities. And of course, they're running themselves into huge words of pro world of problems because, as you know, and as I know, and any sensible person knows, you cannot have quotas and equality. The two things don't work because you can't do it. You can't do it. So it doesn't work. Any sensible person would tell you that. But these people in the service, in the higher up elements of the service, these are not sensible people. And that's exactly what I've been saying. There is a report going to be released pretty soon on the Red Arrows. Uh, flying training system, of course, is struggling, as we know. All these problems have happened under Mike Wigson's watch. So that's all we're saying, really. There's other issues that have come out. And this is one that the papers haven't really picked up upon. But um, this is one where the recruits, minority, minority and uh, women recruits, were put into Holton, Airmen, to train. They didn't have to pass a fitness test. And because they're offered employment before other people that did, white guys that had to pass them before they went in, uh, the, the white men, I think, have been awarded some, uh, some money for that. There we go, payouts, because, of course, they would have been financially penalised and seniority penalised as well by not getting into the service at the same time. So I was highlighting this, I think, to to Greg Bagwell on this and I think that's probably what's causing him some anxiety because uh, it's truth in it and this is quite an important exchange that Greg had during the time that I think he'd blocked me where he does talk about that fake news uh, that I've obviously retweeted so Alicia Kearns an MP conservative MP wrote to him and said look if you're so confident nothing was wrong with the recruitment process and a good woman didn't give up her career for nothing that was group captain Elizabeth Nicole the head of recruitment who did give up her job because she could not abide by what the chief of the air staff was telling her to do which was put minorities and women in over white men why didn't you ask to give evidence to the defense select committee and he's come back, Alicia. The matter to which you refer is subject to an internal MID. I think that's internal inquiry or something. So we'd all do well to steer clear of that. So he's starting trying to frighten people off. We just all do well to. We must almost also not forget that this was all about increasing diversity in the armed forces, something I'm sure you support. As for fake news, I call it. I don't support that diversity. I don't support the forced diversity anywhere, by the way, because there's nothing to do with equality, forcing a diversity in. And he means diversity of skin colour or something. And I'm all for diversity of cognition. And that's why I'm different to this guy here. I, I don't believe this man. We're not the same. Let's just say that. We're not the same. Alicia, though, being clever as a tiger, I think she means increasing diversity fairly and properly, not the reported creation of admin jobs that were surplus to operational requirements to fill with diverse groups. And that's what happened. So they brought a lot of minorities in, a lot of women. I think it was minorities only in this particular cohort, but they brought them in because it was Group Captain Dole, I believe, who brought them in early to um, to satisfy the quota standards that he was going after in recruitment. Got an OB from it, apparently. But they didn't have any jobs to go into, so they were created jobs, allegedly. That's that's what Alicia, I think, is is you know, sort of linking to there. And I don't think the press have picked up on that yet. So I couldn't get into Greg's Twitter account because if I look at the Twitter account, Twitter account now and I, I try and go in there, um, you'll find that I'm blocked. Yeah, so when Greg put out that thing about calling me names, he then immediately blocked me. So in order to go in to this account, we have to create another account. So I did that. I went and got some art from the internet. <laughs> I had to make up a name. I was thinking about Greg at the time. So I've come up with something special. Penis boy. I think it works well. And if you look at it, this is how we're going to go into Greg's account now. So we're going to go and work out what Greg's been saying. So uh, Penis Boy is the new thing that's going to go into Greg's account. Um, little picture of a willy there. I think it's quite cute. Penis Boy. Penis Boy. Because uh, that's like a homage to my Navy days. That kind of riled him up quite a lot. Um, bio. Your mum likes it. And uh, location. Greg's mum. Now, the reason that's so funny is because... Greg had an issue with something I said to him about his mother. It was a mum joke. So Penis Boy is going to go and investigate that. So let's go and find Greg then, shall we? Uh, try searching. Let's go Greg Bagwell. Let's see if I can find. There he is. Look at that lad. Well, not really lad. A bit of a d really. Let's go for. Uh, scroll down then. We'll find those tweets, shall we? Now, the problem with Greg, he's been captured by critical theory. You have to remember that. Diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, LGBTQ plus and uh, environmental, social and governance. Completely captured by the whole Ukraine thing as well. Here we go. So... One thing, now, if you remember, there was a, a book by a guy called Vox Day. Let me bring up something right here. No one's really read this book. I have read this book. And it's the only thing you can really find on social justice warriors. I was attacked 
years ago by a guy called Luke Hoare, and I was trying to work out why Luke attacked me. Why did the, the military go after their, their own so vociferously? There's a, there's a reason for that. It's because if you go after your own, someone that should be on your side, it shows how virtuous you are. So when Gray came after me, it shows how much he means about the subject he's arguing, how virtuous he is, how much he cares about it. And that's why military people sometimes go over there, go after their own so much. And that's what we're seeing with Greg here. But Vox Day wrote this book, SJWs always lie. I think Greg's a social justice warrior, an intersectional social justice warrior in effect. And that's why he's so much into diversity and bringing quotas into the military where they really don't ex exist. It's always fairly obvious on Twitter when a social justice warrior has been caught out as his first response is usually to block the individual at whom he has been tweeting, which happened exactly like that. So Greg shouted at me, said a rude word and then blocked me. There's a lot of stuff here that goes into it about the fact they always lie they always double down it's actually quite an interesting book and these are just notes I've made in it to be fair uh, they always project and he's actually called me a bigot and if you just remember this when I do show you the line where he calls me a bigot I have an odious bigot spreading obvious lies about me they're trying to get the crowd in around them to say oh that guy's a bigot that guy's a bigot so what they try and do there when they when a social justice warrior does come out is they try and locate create a violation of, of their own narrative they point and shriek they try and isolate me in this case swarm everyone on me but people know who I am people know my YouTube channel they know that I come in good faith I haven't got a, a bad bone to speak about anyone really I generally don't and uh, that upsets a lot of people and then they go through the rest of it here so this is how and I'll do one of these on this Luke Hall chap one day I'll just have to get around to it at some point so what Greg's saying here is he's oh, actually I think what happens as well look we've got penis boy down here we've got this little this is quite funny isn't it? he says it's been a tough few days on Twitter I could have stayed out of the RF recruiting debacle but many know that's not in my nature I apologise for anyone offended. I was offended when I resorted to calling someone names. Me, I shouldn't do that, but that particular individual is not very nice. I'm actually really nice. Ask anyone. I stand up for everyone that goes into the military. I help more people get into the military than this man ever has. I guarantee that. I absolutely guarantee. I take emails every day and I've had emails since about 2010, 2011 when I first had a YouTube thing. And I've, oh, Well, okay, comments below. Comments below. Do, do you think I'm a benefit, good or bad? I'm just saying, guys, hit the comments. Tell me if you think I'm trying to do the right thing here. People are obviously giving him some advice. Oh, this is another thread here. For those who think I degraded my service rank, I also apologise, but sometimes you have to stand up for what you think is right. So again, the virtue signalling here is strong with this one. The ball thrown at my RF colleagues has been awful to watch, though my colleagues as well, uh, as have the insinuations about capability. I didn't make that. I don't know what that means. They can't speak for themselves, so I decided to. And if you... Well, let's not talk about this, but apparently he likes to speak for the, for the Chief of Air Staff. This bit's weird. I try to hold a reasonable line between the factions of white nationalists and those who want justice for victims has been surreal. I don't understand. I, someone said that he's calling me a white nationalist, which is, I don't understand why that would be the case. It's a bit kind of, um, yeah, a bit weird. Mike's a good man. Mike Wigson's a good man. He is a good man. I flew with Mike. And a champion for women and minority groups. But at the expense of white men, you have to remember this, he is championing women and minority groups, but at the expense of young white men. That's not what equality is about. Okay, so that's not, that's not equality by any stretch. Let's, if the white nationalists win, Nobody would try. I don't know what he's talking about. I think he's talking about me. I don't want white men to join over minorities or women. I want it to be equal, done on merit. I don't want quotas because if you have quotas, you put the wrong people in airplanes, you put the wrong people in air traffic, you put the wrong people in engineering, people die. Supply, admin, they all die. They all say we'll pander and get get the whole group back in again. So one thing that's classic with SJWs is he would say, I've had multiple private messages in support. He's saying, I've had lots of support. And what that but he means by that, of course, is I haven't had support. I will now focus on the graver matter of Ukraine. So now he goes into this virtue signaling of, hey, what's more important is Ukraine. And that's what he's doing. And people are saying, white nationalists, come on, Greg. Yeah, so I, he put this up here. I got behind your mother. She seemed to like, that wasn't to do with him. I didn't write that to him. I did say something about his mum. <laughs> mum jokes. But um, and we're going to find those now. This was for someone else. This was banter with someone else. He's gone back to November last year, I think, to find that. I think the guy was calling me a white nationalist, someone else. And I, I went, well, your mum seems like white nationalist, mate. You know what I mean? And the, the problem is, and Graham's right here, what Greg was doing was saying that anyone was speaking out against Chief of Air Staff, Greg was taking names down about them, which I find absolutely incredible. So never say a but, he cancels out the apology. Well, it wasn't an apology, was it? So people, have, people are a bit disappointed, I think, with him here. I'm not saying, look, people are on my side because I don't believe they are or I don't really care. That was what that was. And I don't think there's any more on Greg's page, really. Because I don't know whether... <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. I don't think there's any more on Greg's page, really, that. Oh, here we go. Yesterday, I swore and blocked someone. He scrolled the feed to miss out the one where he insulted my mum. I didn't. A feed collapses here. Uh, I'll show you the tweet I said about his mum. It's banter. But the fact he attended uh, Britannia Royal Naval College with his Fly Navy sign-off 
might explain his motive to constantly leak into the press and trashing the, the Royal Air Force. So I say that my solicitor wrote to me about this because that is, of course, slander or libel. Uh, I haven't leaked to the press. I'm not even in the Air Force. I can't possibly leak. Um, and trashing the Royal Air Force, that's not my intention at all. I've always said that. My intention is to save the Air Force from itself. My standards are currently higher than the Royal Air Force's standards, hence why Chief of Air Staff has brought it into dispute over the, the last uh, few years and Greg here is not helping. To those that do, this is the guy you're leaking emails to. People don't leak emails to me. Uh, factually incorrect. They never do. So... He's a bigot, plain and simple. Remember what I said from that last thing we just looked at from Vox Day's book, where he says, I've got a bigot sp spreading uh, rumours about me. This comes out of the social justice warrior playbook. And this is exactly what Greg is, he's a social justice warrior. So when he says I'm a bigot, plain and simple, I'm not a bigot. I'm trying to help out everyone get in the military. I have more emails from minorities at the moment telling me that they're leapfrogging in air squadrons. They're getting ahead of their white peers, even though they're applying um, behind them. And uh, this will come out in the press. I'm not behind this campaign. I have no campaign. And this is what my solicitor is saying. You haven't got any campaign, mate. You can bring a case. I'm, like, I'm not going to bring a case against a guy like this. We both flew airplanes together. It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's not make it a rally call for others, except you do. This guy here is a bit weird. He's 48. He lacks a purpose. And that's written in his own channel. I read that a long time before. But he's saying if you browse my online videos, um, that the common theme appears, and that's drugs. I just want to say, guys, I'm a bit rare right now because I stopped drinking in January the 1st this year. Um, I don't have any vices at the moment. I need to collect some. I don't look at porn. I just don't look at porn. I, don't, I think it's bad for relationships. I don't look at it. I don't drink anymore. Uh, I don't smoke anymore. I haven't smoked for like 15 years now. I used to smoke a lot, by the way. Um, I don't uh, gamble. There's no gambling at all. Uh, there's no drugs. I don't do drugs. Of course, I don't do drugs. I don't have any vices. I have zero vices intentionally. I wake up early and I lift weights in my garage. And sometimes that's actually a really difficult thing to do. And I do struggle with it. But I do that. Okay. So when people say that there's drugs involved, I don't mind. It doesn't upset me because it's not, it's not true. I don't know, I don't know this woman here. An organisation in which so many people feel the need to leak emails to a non-serving individual, which assumes me, is symptomatic of an organisation in which little trust exists between rank and file in the ivory towers. And we've just seen that, haven't we? This didn't happen solely on Wiggy's tenure. This is the Chief of Air Staff. It's on you as well. Attempt to gloss over the lack of leadership and ability shown by you and your peers by flinging unfounded accusations of bigotry around are laughable. And that's what I'm trying to say here. I just had to put this out, guys. I just had to kind of put this out just a little bit to kind of say, hold on a second here. I don't think I'm the bad person. I'm not the person that's calling myself now, we've got to find out what I said about this, haven't we? So let me just go back to my thing here. So what I said about him is I keep trying to warn people about the recent failings of senior RF leadership aptly demonstrated. And this is the this is a failing right here. I did say something about his mum, actually. It's a bit of banter. Let me see if I can find that for you. Oh, all right, OK. So I said, he said, um, I insulted his mum. This is like playground. It's funny. I said, I didn't insult his mum. What is this, the playground? He said, Tim who, when I said he could take my name down if he was taking names, and I said, ask your mum. That's what it was, ask your mother. That's literally what the tweet was, ask your mother, which is funny, ask your mum, like she knows who I am. I mean, I don't know his mum, you know, I don't know his mum, but um, Penis Boy does. So if you want to find more about it, guys, you know, I'm against the whole quote thing. I'm against the forcing of diversity, equity, inclusivity within military forces. I was on Talk TV talking about it yesterday. I'm not backing down over this, guys. This is ideological capture. This is this is the whole environmental social governance thing, isn't it? This is ESG, DEI, LGBTQ+. This is wokery. This is nasty stuff, critical theory, critical race theory, all that kind of stuff coming out. And it's, it's awful. And the fact that we've got seniors at the moment allowing this to come into our armed force to me is abhorrent. I'm not going to stand for quotas, I'm not in something I'm paying money for. I'm a taxpayer, right? And I was in this for a very long time. Let me know, guys, um, what you think about that. I thought I'd just throw this out. I know I sound like a bit of a snivelling schoolgirl. I just remember, let's just come back. And this is the point where we started. I'll leave you now. Look, again, this is attitudes towards Royal Air Force senior leaders, okay? And I've fallen for the second year to the lowest levels ever. I'm not talking out of turn here. I'm telling you what the Armed Forces Continuous Attitude, Attitude Survey is saying. And I'm backing up with a classic example from a former 2IC of Her Majesty's Royal Air Force, Greg Bagwell. And if he's able to do that and able to insult people like that in public, and my, I'm not pushing with my solicitors for any kind of defamation of character case, for him telling me that I'm leaking stuff or anything like that. I'm not going ahead with that. But, he, you know, you tread a fine line, mate, because I run a business here, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to stand for that rubbish. So how about you sort your shop out all right, and then you come back to me next year when these figures have improved because this is pretty damning. There's no other service that's looking like this at the moment. Um, there's no other service where the confidence in the leadership of that service has halved in the last two, halved in the last two years to its lowest level since the question was first asked in 2015. Get out, mate. Just get in the sea. You're an absolute disgrace.